Oh, balls. <laughs> okay, cuts! Start the head again! Oh, cuts, we're gonna, cuts. We gotta cut that part. She said balls! <laughs>resident enigma caswell shaw and welcome to mcast vods that was it yeah yes and um, we apologize that we haven't made a video in quite some time i believe um we're working on it we've been super busy but um yeah starting the spring and the summer we want to dedicate a lot more time to making channels a this channel making channels <laughs> <laughs> is going to be about friendships and what friendship means just today with millennials in the 21st century our generation especially what does friendship mean to you as the audience i mean if you were to look up the term in webster's dictionary what do you think well, i don't have a copy of webster's dictionary here in front of me of course but what do you think the dictionary would say just if you were to like summarize what the dictionary would say about the meaning of friend or friendship hmm. friendship what is friendship the basic definition of it would be, well, just camaraderie and have two more people hanging out in, uh, in an enclosed space, doing whatever, shooting the breeze, playing games, uh, just all around have, having a good time, being respectful, treating people the way you want to be treated. You give 100% of your, your love, your support, and again, your respect to, to another person or a group of people, and they reciprocate that, and that's what really friendship is. Right, that's a very, you know, uh, broad term, whatever the word is. It doesn't really dig super deep into what the meaning of friendship is, in my opinion, because I've got lo have lots of experiences with friends. I moved around a lot as a kid. So I've had friends come and go in and out of my life. I'm not gonna give away my age just yet. You'll have to find out my age later on unless you wanna guess my age, feel free. But I have been to eight elementary schools in my life. Eight? I think I never did tell you that. I thought I shared no, that with you. Not. Wow, I have a very interesting upbringing, which is why I love about acting, because I can put forth my real life experiences and stuff that I experienced as a kid. You know, the, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I've known you for like, what feels like four or five years since like- Not as like, long as that, 2015. Well, well, it feels, feels like that, okay. as, as I yeah. said. It's, it's like, I always feel there's something new I'm learning about you. Really? Like, as, as oh, you said, you've oh, been through eight you. elementary schools. I've been to one. But about what high school? Oh, five elementary schools, three high schools. Oh, yeah, Sorry, sure. not eight. That was my bad. Yeah, not quite there. A lot of it was to do with bullying. It wasn't necessarily just um, moving around a lot as a kid. Um, actually, we could have saved me going to a lot of schools. It hadn't been for the bullying. I was homeschooled for quite a while in and out of homeschooling because of bullying. Um, I think everybody goes through bullying as a kid. I mean, what kid has not been bullied or they were the bully or they felt insecure that they had to bully other kids? A lot of bullies, that's another topic for another day. We're just kind of getting off side track. But a lot of bullies feel really insecure um, because of maybe they come from a bad home family situation. You know, we're not here to judge people, right? Nope. Anyway, continuing on about friendship, point being is I've had a couple of friends. I'm going to say I lost about, if you want to want to give it a true, true friendship, I mean, I lost three guy friends in the past year, if, with the exception of Caswell, of course, because he's still my friend. I'm basically the last one left. Basically, trust me, I, you know, I love, it's quality over quantity. It's the same with clothing. Quality people, and I'm not saying you're a bad person because we stopped being friends. That's not it, you know? We get busy, we're adults. North America is a very busy continent where people go six months without seeing each other. Easily to a year or longer. Basically, to put it in layman's terms, you just drift apart. It sucks because you're so busy with work, your family, dealing with finances, cleaning your house. If you haven't moved out like me, if you're still living at home, you know, it's whatever it may be. Or maybe you just, you let personal things get in the way. For me last year, I'll explain the various reasons. I'll talk about, talk about the guy friends that I lost. I lost two female okay. friends last year. Mm. Was it two or was it three? I would remember. No, it was just two. Yeah, two. Two female friends that I lost, and both of them just stopped talking to me. We drifted so apart. Just out of, out of the blue? Yeah, out of the blue. One of them, I think I have a reason why she's married. Uh, she's still on my Facebook friends. They're both still on my Facebook friends. I'm not going to say we're on bad terms. 
But one of them, um, she doesn't she doesn't live in my area. Um, she doesn't live in the big city. She lives like an hour and a half outside of where I live. And she always had to come up here by car. But again, I didn't want her to come up here. She wanted to meet me halfway. She could have said that to me. Like she could have said, Emily, I'm really upset that I have to come to the big city all the time to come and see you. Can we meet halfway? Can you take the train to come and see me? Because I don't want to have a car. As you and I both know, insurance where we live here in Canada is super expensive. Oh, it's expensive. It it's all hell. It sucks big time. You're going to be paying a minimum. If you're under 25 that's all you need to know about our ages that we're under 25 we're not going to give away our ages as you can see we have acne here so we can pass as teenagers high school we yeah, still break no out idea how often i hear that it's yeah like, we still break out so it's, it's like it's a good my, thing. my wheelhouse as, as as an actor where i can't really play any character uh older than like age 15 or 16. that's a good thing i take it as a compliment yeah, I of course I, yeah. I, take it, I take it as a compliment. And actually, I remember around two years ago, I ran into one of my um, one of my old friends in middle school, and the first thing that he said that um, when I met him at Eglinton Station is that, "Wow, you have not aged." And I'm like, "Really? How about we go to the uh, the, the cinema and we can talk about how I haven't aged in eight years?" There we go. Exactly. It's also, I can still fit into my shirts. Not maybe not my pants. My pants maybe because I don't have any pants in grade eight. I have shirts. If I were to show them, I could maybe have a shirt up so that I can see from here. I think. So I, I have from grade eight that still fit me. No. And I'm, again, I'm not giving away my age. I'm not saying how many years ago that was when I was in grade eight. But uh, anyway, you I get love the that point. You have to specify that. Yes, and they still time. fit me up top from grade eight when I was 13. Yes, not saying what year. Anyway, so point being is, we'll get into the reasons, let's, we're gonna stick, stick to the topic. So my guy friends, okay. I have one guy friend, it was very unfortunate because what he knows the situation where we were romantically involved and he was in another country and I'm not saying anything bad. It was really unfortunate the way it happened. I couldn't trust him anymore. You know, he really broke my trust. He hurt me a lot and unfortunately, you know, I can forgive somebody. I can wish them the best. I can see the good in them. I still see the good in this person and everything. But um, unfortunately, after uh, over a year of broken trust, whatever it was, a year and a half, and you can tell if someone's changed by their actions, not by their words. Words are empty, words are meaningless. Whether they're a friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, romantic relationship, whatever. You can tell if they changed by their actions, right? Words are deaf, words are meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. You can say something, you can say you're sorry a million times, but unless you're, you truly mean it, you know, by your actions, or you know, if you're still manipulating somebody, you know what I mean? And unfortunately, what happened with me and this old guy friend that I was friends with for four years, we knew each other from school. I actually went to boarding school in the States. That's one of my three high schools that I went to. Oh, yeah. Technically speaking, it, it does count as a high school. So technically, I would have gone to four if you want to count that. But that was in the States, so I don't know if I would count that. But anywho, um, yeah, so that's that's one thing. I won't get into details about that. I've talked about it in one of my other videos um, as to what went down with us. But I've forgiven him. I wish him the best. Maybe a couple years later. Do you want to link that in the description if people want to see it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we will. I will link them in the description below. But uh, yeah, anyway, so that's just, it's a too bad, you know, he suffered from a mental illness, you know, and it was, it was unfortunate. But that's, so that's one friend that I lost because of broken trust and he led me on, didn't know what he wanted at the time. And when you get romantically involved with guy friends, a lot of the time, it's just a really bad idea. It can be and it can't be. Like, I'm not saying every single guy out there is going to use his girlfriend just to do stuff with her. No, I'm not saying that, but you've really got to be careful about that. Moving on, um, second guy friend. I knew him four years in college. Um, we were friends from December 2013 all the way up until last year, October, last year, 2017. Now, I'm no superstitious person or anything. Don't take this the wrong way. But believe it or not, um, he invited me to hang out at his place north of the big city um, around uh, October the 13th, Friday the 13th. 2017 again i'm not a superstitious person but coincidentally it just happened that things went really badly for me that day i was on a talk show with this lady it's a long story i shouldn't have never gone on the talk show in the first place i'll be sharing that in another video on my personal channel here mz's life is my personal channel by the way i will be linking that in the description as well and we'll be talking about our social media at the end of this video but <laughs> or lack thereof <laughs> yeah, you don't like it that's another video for another day um, sorry i'm really recovering from a cold i was i had almost pneumonia a couple of weeks ago so i apologize you can talk <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Sorry about this. Just stay alive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so my, my guy friend from college, he, um, it was unfortunate because we kind of had a falling out in 2010. Not a falling out, but we... He invited me over to come out to his place and I wanted to hang out with him and I guess I just wasn't thinking. I thought, well, there's always time to hang another day. You know, I have this going on in my acting career and you know, this going on for modeling. I'm looking for a good job right now. You know, when you're an acting, you're in and out of jobs. If you're in the industry, most of the time you're in and out of jobs unless you find a really good, flexible job Guilty. that you've been happy with, whether it's work at home or something flexible or whatever it is, but um, waitressing wasn't for me just so we get to the point there. So I was in and out of work last year because of acting and other personal things like health problems, which I no longer have, thankfully. Thank God. But anyway, we'll get to kind of the chase. I ended up staying on the talk show on Friday the 13th last year, much longer than I expected. I was expecting to be out of this woman's house where I was doing the talk show, what about with him? Probably by 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, because I had gone to her place by 12 o'clock in the afternoon. She told me to get there by 12 in the afternoon. And then she kept talking and talking and talking while I was with another lady who was also on the show with me. And I was supposed to meet my friend, right, and be up north of Toronto by 7 o'clock in the evening. And I, I just wasn't expecting that. You, you're not really going to think, you know, when it's just a talk show, it's not like an acting thing. It's not like background where you're hours. Right. And you can't do anything that day. You know for a fact that you cannot do anything in that day because those of you who've done film extra work, you know that you're going to be on there forever and you just can't do anything at all. You can't commit to seeing a friend. You can't commit to a doctor's appointment. You can't do anything like that, right? Nope. You're committed to that project. For the entire day, if not yeah, longer. Yeah, that's, that's just it. 90% of background work is yep. purely waiting and then you're Sitting, actually on set. Yep. You're on set for what feels like half an hour mm -hmm. and then they send you home. So it's like... Mm -hmm. What the hell did you spend all that time for? Sticking to the topic here. Anyway, going on. So he, his mom, I, unfortunately, I let him know a couple of hours before I was heading to the train station to go up and see him. I said, I'm so sorry. I'm running late. I feel so badly. I wasn't expecting this to happen, man. That was out of my control. I shouldn't have committed to going on the TV show, the talk show, sorry. In the first place, that was my mistake. Well, you gotta admit that the um, the talk show was, was a good experience. No, it wasn't. I will get into that later. I haven't told you about that either. You no, learned you something didn't. new oh, every God. day, and I will tell you <laughs> after we're done recording this video. Tim, I am so sorry. How I just make up. So sorry. Sammy the poet not apologizes. Sammy apologizes. Okay, continuing on here. So, um, yeah, so anyway, his mom, you know, um, I don't know what happened. He said, it's okay, Emily, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. It was fine. But he's like, what are you getting here? And, you know, he has a car, right? So he's not going to understand what it's like to have to take public transportation. He has a vehicle. You know, like his, his parents helped him buy a vehicle. I'm not saying you're a bad person if you have a vehicle, but you can try to have a bit of empathy even if you've never taken public transit a day in your life. Or even if you had, he must have taken it, I'm sure. Not everyone has a car all the time. Maybe his car broke down and he had to take it. But you have a bit of empathy, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. You gotta have empathy, but at the same time, you gotta count your blessings knowing the fact that you don't have to deal with delays. The way or, that I have to. Or I'm you have to party. deal with the, yeah. the subway train it will be running slower than normal. Every single day of the week. Lovely about living in the city. <laughs> okay. Yeah, continuing on. So what ended up happening, we'll get to the point, is his mom, he ended up yelling at me on the phone. He says, my mom is furious. Dinner is burned. You are officially uninvited. He texts me all this. Instead of leaving it on my voicemail, then I was having problems with my phone. Now, that was not his fault. And that was technically not really my fault either because I was waiting for a phone of mine to come. I ordered a phone from the bank and I was waiting for the phone to be shipped to my house. I was like, I had already ordered it by then, but it takes six to eight weeks to get to my house. Right. So that wasn't my fault. Well, I'm not going to go out and buy another phone just for the hell of it while I'm waiting for a phone to come. My you already phone, have one phone, so what's Exactly. That? So the, my, the phone that I had at the time was garbage and I couldn't pick up. It would freeze half the time and the reception was horrible. So he kept, he must have been really frustrated coming from his point of view because he kept having to leave message after message and I called him and then his, his phone went to voicemail. Straight to voicemail. Bad communication. Poor communication is a basically a disaster for is detrimental to your friendship or a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The, that's the key here. One hundred percent. So this is a horrible thing. And then it, well, this is what upset me the most. I wished him a birth. His, okay. I wished him a happy birthday. His birthday is actually three days before mine. Believe it or not, my birthday is on Walt Disney's birthday, December the fifth. So it's on December the second. So I wished him a happy birthday. And then he says, "Who is this?" 
when I text him, okay, you clearly deleted my number all because your mother yelled at me on the phone. You know, you're, you're, you're younger than me, you know, I understand. But just because you're living at home doesn't mean you need to let your mother tell you who you can and can't hang out with. You're, if you're that easily influenced by your mom, your mom's met me for what, five minutes? Four years ago, your mother's never even had me over to your place before. So she automatically assumes I'm a horrible person. All because, first of all, there were no, not even any trains going up to north of Toronto. Love it. At the time being, there were no trains going up, only buses. Buses come every hour and a half. Every maybe, if you're lucky, every hour. And by the time I said, I'll get there when I get there. I said, if I get there at 10 or 11, I can even take a taxi. I even offered to take a taxi from the train station to his place. He's like, no, forget it, forget it. I'm like, okay, fine. And he says, oh, he's like, Emily, I hope you're happy. My mom has a lot to say to you right now. And I'm like, how old are you though? Are you in high school? Look, if you were in this situation, would your mom butt in like this? Would you get her involved? Tell me your perspective as a guy. Tell me what you would have done in this situation. Tell the audience right now. Okay. Here's your opinion. Where do I, okay, where, where do I begin? Where do you want me to start? Just talk away. This is your feedback. You're a guy, you're my guy friend. Tell me, tell me. All right, I'll, I'll tell the audience. I'll give it a go. Okay, so, okay, well, I'm, I'm assuming you want me to, um, what I would do in my, in my, oh. If it was me coming uh, to your apartment. Okay, if you were coming to my this apartment. Is, and this is, and you were the guy friend, and this happened. You and I had the same kind of thing happen to you and me that happened with my other guy friend who I'm no longer friends with. Okay, well, I honestly, well, first, first of all, the guy, the way how that guy handled it was complete, completely immature and taken out of context. So much so that it really wasn't worth just cutting someone off because of a few things that didn't go as planned. And honestly, that's my uh, pet peeve as a whole. And I actually also knew um, a friend of mine that uh, was was kind of the same way when I told him that I was that I was going to be late. And um, it was also around the time of middle school, which is why it was so bad. Um, I was supposed to go t over to his apartment to go watch um, to go watch wrestling, and I told him that I was going to be late. I was going to be I was going to be there at eight o'clock, as uh, as we would agree, because I wanted to get my homework done so that way I wouldn't have anything to worry about for the weekend. I'm one of those people that gets his homework done like a good little nerd, but I digress. And he just completely flipped out by saying, "Oh, I made all this food, and I was all going to go to waste." And I'm just like, you know what? You know what? Forget it. You, you, you just rage all you want. Just if you if you calm down, I will I will be there. I'm just letting you know that I'm going to be late. I didn't say I wasn't going to show up. I just said I'm just going to show up later than eight o'clock. I'm not going to be on time. At least I had the courtesy to let you know. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is it actually ties into em what Emily just said about letting uh, this guy know that she was going to be late. Especially, or... sorry to interrupt. You go on. I don't, yeah, I don't have a car. Point taken. Go on. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't have a car. You offered to take a tax mm -hmm. uh, taxi when when the train was just being an inconvenience. Oh, no train up there, just buses, yeah. buses only. Yeah, no, yeah. no trains. No, no trains, yeah. there were yeah. buses, and there, everything, the yeah. transportation was horrible. being a huge inconvenience. Horrible, oh, horrible. So, yeah, she, she, let, she let him know out of, uh, out of courtesy mm -hmm. that she wasn't going to be on time, and she'd think, by letting the person know, you wouldn't keep the, you wouldn't keep them waiting. You wouldn't have them to ask, "Oh, where the hell are you? Why are you Why are you taking so long?" At least she gave him a reason why. And if that was me, then I'd be like, "Oh, okay, uh, no problem. Yeah, the buses aren't great. First, first of all, and yeah, I would I would let I would let my mom know if she was the one making dinner. Uh, I would say, "Oh, hey, mom, Emily's not gonna uh, be here until a little bit later because she has to wait for a bus, but she's." she's willing to pay for uh, a cab if she were able to pay for it on her own I would more than um, be willing to pay her back just for the fact that she's making the extra effort to show up when she already had something else to do and you think you'd want to be accommodating because you're the one being the host she's the guest she's coming over to your place for dinner you want to yeah. make sure that she has a freaking good time oh boy yeah. and yeah yeah. You go turn a complete 180, completely blame her for something that you yourself did that was completely out of her control. I think mature, Im, being immature is being a little too subtle. You're flat out being a grade A child, my dude. Oh boy. You can't go oh around boy. treating women like that, especially one who's 
pretty close to you. We you were. gotta. We were. Yeah, we you were. were. Yeah. Not anymore. I know. Yeah, I use that in you the blocked past, me on obviously. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, you blocked me on Facebook. That is passive aggressive beyond. Anyway, enough about that. So, if you're watching this, you know what? Yeah, you, you know what? I was even gonna go up to him, and, and I was thinking of going to England this year because I'm half British, and or next year, not sure when. But I was planning on getting tickets for England this year. You know, I'm getting a uh, start a new job tomorrow. Things are working out really well in my life now compared to last year. Okay. And I was actually gonna get the tickets from him. He would have made money as a travel agent, but no, he he wasn't getting impatient. He's like, when are you getting your tickets? I'm like, well, you know, I'm sorry if I'm having family problems and health problems right now, where I can't get my ticket just like that. You're living with your mom. You don't have to pay rent. It's okay. I know you live with your mom. It's okay. That's not what I meant. I'm so sorry. I know. I know. Oh, it sounds I know, horrible. I know you're it's talking okay. about the other guy. Yeah. About the other guy. Dude, but like, <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from. He had a full yes, time job making good money as a travel agent. My point being is. If it's, if it's next year, I will get the ticket. It's not that I don't want to get the ticket, but things get in the way in life. You have a lot of setbacks and obstacles where you're not always going to be able to get things when you want them done. Things so until then, happen. chill out your bloody numpty. Oh, bloody what? Numpty. Numpty? I've never, actually never even heard of that expression before. Oh, you never heard of the no, term numpty? not at all. Oh, it just means a stupid person. Oh, lovely! <laughs> a bloody wanker! That's very right, harsh. Right, bloody wanker. <laughs> All right. You, I had a Ukrainian friend, lovely girl. I want to get in touch with her again. Where she's on Facebook. We never got into a fight, nothing. We just drifted apart. One of us, she haven't hung out with her since my birthday party, December of 2016. Maybe we can get in touch again. She's on Facebook. Maybe I can call her up and just suggest it. I don't know. We were both so busy last year. I think she was finishing school. She'd already finished school, but she's on here from Ukraine. Ukraine on a visa, so I'm not sure if she had her permanent residency or not. We, we had never had any problems, but I texted her last year. Sometimes she's not the greatest at text messaging and getting back to someone will take her a day, a day or two. Yeah, that's okay. Some people are like that. I've been guilty of that, I'm sure, myself. Um, but she doesn't go on social media very much either. She's like you. She doesn't go on Facebook very much at all, but she was at my last birthday party, 2016. Hopefully, I can reconnect with her. So the female fraction, the female end, I really haven't lost too many friends because of fighting. It's the guys that have been petty this time. Oh my. <laughs> and you normally really think it'd be the women because we're always on our bloody periods. <laughs> Once a month for a week, right? So, you know, there we go. Okay. Men. Men are, instead of PMSing, what should I call it? Testosterone messing. I don't know. Testo messing. Premenstrual syndrome ing. Testosterone something. I don't know if you can think of a better term. Write it in the comments below. Sorry. Back to my regular voice. Um, I can't think of one, but yeah, not PMSing. I don't know. Men essing. I don't know. I can't think of something. If you can think of something, we'll have it up another video. But yeah, these men have issues with their testosterone and their mothers and their whatever it is, immaturity. And yeah, I'm not talking about you again because you're the one male b b guy friend that has stuck it out with me. You, you never really know what's going on through another person without communication, where you can't just spend so much time putting yourself through hell because you, you're worried that you you may have pissed off someone. Mm. Don't think that mm. you may have pissed off someone. If you know you did something that rubbed someone the wrong way, mm. try your best to find out. If they don't want to talk, that just means they're still steaming and trying to force them to talk is not going to help the situation. Oh, so boy. sometimes you just got to you just got to accommodate for the other person if they're upset and they don't want to talk but you know for a fact that talking will only solve the problem, only get to the root of the problem. You just have to wait until you both calm down, mm -hmm. that you're not at each other's throats because, let's face it, when people are angry, they don't really mean think they logically. Or they don't always mean what they say. They just, just acting out in their lash, emotions. Lash out in their emotions. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like one of those get attack them before they attack you kind of the, kind of a mentality, and that's pretty common these days. So you got to watch out for that. You got to watch out for people like that, oh and they can just oh, they be can vindictive. Destroy. 
anxiety. I've, I've had this I with that guy who mentioned who suffers from mental illness. Yeah, it really gave me anxiety. So unfortunately, much as I hate to say it, for the now anyway, I had to cut him out of my life because he didn't get help for his issues. So, so yeah. sometimes you just gotta be selfish. I hate to say it. You got you gotta so give yourself first. You gotta figure out a way to accommodate for your for your own happiness so that way yeah. you don't go insane from the built up anxiety that's drama. caused by well, drama. Never ending drama. All right, well, thanks guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it too, feel free to give it a thumbs down and we will be uploading this video very um, shortly. Weekly, we're gonna arrange a schedule for every week. Oh, yes, oh, okay. we will. Awesome. Then okay. let's, let's get to Premiere Pro and start putting the other episode together. Yeah, okay, well, thanks so much for watching and my Instagram is at emilycofficial. Emily, E-M-I-L-Y-C. And yours, of course, you don't like social media. Well, I well, I do have Instagram. What uh, is it? Tell the audience. My Instagram is Casual Shaw. Again, just my name. It's not really, not really something I want to put an official under because it's just the one Casual Shaw and I want to keep it that way. <laughs> I'm not famous yet. Mm. Yet. <laughs> yet, yet, yet. Okay. There's always YouTube famous down the road. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Toodaloo.